Very warm welcome back on this Thursday morning to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Now, I don't know if you've heard the news, but something quite bizarre happened last week as Joe Burgers were treated to an unusual sight this past Sunday, a mammoth operation to, to move a, a Boeing 737 across the R21 highway became the very first such operation in South Africa. Now, if you've ever wondered how they move giant aircraft from one place to another without flying it, well, here's how it happens. In the early hours of Sunday morning, hundreds of officials from Sanral and Comair gathered on the R21 highway at the R24 split to begin the first ever transfer of a Boeing 737 across a Joburg highway from OR Tambo International Airport to Comair. After mountains of preparation and with the road finally closed, two cranes began ferrying the 32-tonne 737 across the highway. At this point, traffic was stopped for about 30 to 40 minutes to guarantee everyone's safety. quite an operation. Uh, we're still keeping the traffic live until the, the, the actual body of the plane is over, over, the, over the highway. That's when we close the lanes totally. This is in order that we, we don't disrupt the traffic too much and that we don't inconvenience people uh, uh, too much. After being placed tentatively on the highway, the cables were then dismantled, re-rigged from the Kame side with another two cranes and then moved to Kame. It's the first time it's ever been done in this country and uh, in order to move an entire aircraft across a national highway is a mammoth task. And uh, I must say that uh, Sanrail have been absolutely fantastic in assisting us uh, in managing the traffic on their roads because people think they just do regular policing. This is a, a major project for them. With the operation finally completed, no doubt the team was flying high after a job well done. Fantastic stuff indeed. Now, joining us on the line is the man who was instrumental in this mammoth operation, Sanrel Regional Manager, Ishmael Essa. Ishmael, thank you so much for taking our call this morning and good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning to listeners as well and watching our viewers. Now, I must say, it's, it goes without saying, this was a huge operation. In fact, the very first of its kind in South Africa. How long did it take to plan this entire thing? I mean, you must have had sleepless nights about it. Uh, the planning started by Kong here about six months ago. There's a lot of people the missions required, especially from the airports company of South Africa and others, because the Oatembo International Airport is a national key point. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of security and, and, and uh, uh, being an international airport, there are also the airside rules that need to be followed and all of that. So it, was, it, it took a long time to get the permissions and the planning, because with these cranes, it, it seems easy when it happens, but there's a lot of calculations and behind the scenes working that have to be done in order to ensure the right size of crane and, 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 and the reach that the crane can, can, that has in those circumstances. Yeah, and Another clearly... big factor that needs to be taken into account is in the weather conditions. Because the wind is high, and there's a lot of wind, then, mm. then the, the, the stuff has to be reported, the, the move has to be reported. And I mean, clearly a lot of manpower required and a lot of co uh, coordination to make sure that this was a success. But why did the aircraft have to be lifted over the freeway? And, uh, you know, has this been done in other countries before? It has been done. It's been done once in Europe and, and then once in Australia. So, and, uh, and then there was something in America as well. Mm -hmm. We're not sure of that one. Uh, the reason it has been moved is that one cannot put it in a trailer and sort of drive it around or tow it around because of the, the, the roads leading up to the center were very, very narrow. One couldn't uh, do it that way. And the length of the aircraft was the other factor. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what's going to happen with the plane once it's, it's there um, at uh, Kame? The, the, uh, they're going to use it as a training facility for the cabin crew. So all the stewards and the air hostesses and, and that will be trained inside a live situation with, with the inside of the aircraft. So the aircraft will be in decommissioned. So the option was to, to, to scrap it and cut it up and sell it for scrap metal mm -hmm. or use it uh, in this manner. Yes. It, it simulates a very live situation for the crew inside an aircraft. They're working as they would. Uh, uh, normally. Mm -hmm. I've got to ask the question, I mean, as we were looking at those pictures, uh, I saw some blue lights on the road, so everyone's wanting to know, did the aircraft have to pay any e-toll fees? <laughs> Fortunately not, it didn't go under again. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, Mr. Esa, thank you so much for taking our call and congratulations on a job well done. Thank you very much. Fantastic. That is, of course, regional manager of Sanrol, uh, Mr. Ishmael Esa, telling us about that huge mission to move that Boeing 737 across the R21 highway. But now on to other things. It's time for this.
That's a hashtag throwback Thursday for you. Let's get it. <laughs>